Today we are refinishing the valves for our LS swap in the Corvette. Stick around. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage and today we are working on our LS 6.0 that we're putting in the Corvette. We've got more to do. Specifically, we're going to start working on the heads. Uh, and here, let me just kind of pan over here and show you what we got going on. We've got a table full of everything. These are the pistons that came out of it. I went ahead and ran those things through the old uh, ultrasonic cleaner. Hit them with some WD-40 to make sure that the uh, we don't have any surface rust issues, things like that. And for the most part, I've cleaned all the valves so far, but I kind of wanted to show you what we were working with. This is a good example of before, sort of. I actually ran these through the ultrasonic cleaner months ago, and you can kind of see that there's some surface rust on there. You know, a quick and easy way of getting these things polished up is to throw a little tape on the end to protect these things, and then grab your scotch bright. Let me grab my drill over here. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So here I got some scotch right. It's got plenty of WD-40 on it already. And in fact, you can do this without running through the ultrasonic. Just keep that in mind. It's a great way to get everything kind of cleaned up and ready to go. Might need a little more WD-40 on this one. I like to take a rag after that and give it a nice polish or a nice rub down. And there you have it. Exhaust valve looking good. So now that that's done, the next big step that we want to do is we want to lap these things in. And you're saying, oh, why would we lap these in if they're used valves? Listen, when it comes to sealing your heads, the best job that you can do, the more power you're going to make out of it. Having leaky valves, even just a small bit, is going to cause you to loosen compression on the compression stroke and lapping in is a quick and easy task you can get yourself some valve grinding compound and a couple of lap tools these things off of ebay or uh, amazon probably 10 bucks for both of them and honestly we only need the one size But I've got to find a place to do this because I've got all my workbenches tied up right now. So let me figure out something that I can work on here and we'll go about lapping a valve in. Okay, these are the, the heads that I soda blasted. I have not cleaned these yet, uh, mainly because we're just going to get them dirty with lapping compound. So once I get all the valves lapped in, then I'll go through, I'll hose these things down, get them washed off real good and then get them ready for paint. But, so I can keep track of what valves go where, I'm going to go ahead and put a one here. And I'm going to draw an arrow. That means I'm going this direction. So as I grab an intake valve, say this one here, it's going to be 1.1. So I know it goes in this head and it goes in this spot because it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Just a nice way of keeping track. That way, whenever we lap a valve into a specific seat, we don't have to worry about accidentally getting mixed up down the road. Once we get these lapped in, we can take them out, wipe them down, get the valves clean, and then we can go back and reinstall or reassemble whenever we're ready to put the springs and stuff in. I mean, this part of the process is pretty straightforward, pretty easy. We're just going to put this on our valve face. Doesn't take a lot. If I can get the lid. Oh, great. Now I'm just getting lapping compound everywhere. <laughs> go ahead. Run this thing home and give it a spin to get lapping compound all the way around the valve seat. And now we're going to lap it. Let me go ahead and put this like this. That way I can really get the spin on this thing. So as you go through and lap this more and more, you're going to hear it get quieter. It's going to be pretty noisy at first because it's doing a lot of work. And as these surfaces start to get worn down and, and looking good where they're going to line up with each other nicely, you get a lot less noise. Let me grab a towel. Let 
that's looking a lot better. And what we're looking for is you can see where this thing has been lapped into the seat. See the change in color right there on the edge. That's the surface area that's making contact with the valve seat. So we want to get that nice and smooth. And I would consider that probably pretty good. Let's take a look at the seat side. Make sure everything looks good over there. So if we come in here close and look at our valve seat, you can see this is what an unlapped seat looks like. You can see the discoloration, things like that on there. And then look at that. Look how clean that thing is. Hopefully we got enough light there that you can kind of see what I'm talking about. We'll call that one good. We're going to go ahead and move down the rest of these. Now the exhaust house took a lot more work. There's a lot more on the surface, both of the seat and the valve itself that need to be ground down to get that smooth flush contact that you're going to want out of your valves. So I actually had to put on lapping compound a couple times on this one and run it probably three times longer than I had to do the intake valve. But now we're going to have a good seal. Go through, knock all these out. It's cheap easy you can do it yourself there's no reason not to do this if you're building or rebuilding a junkyard motor something like that you're going to make sure that you have peak performance by doing this so i'm going to get back to it just another quick tip for you guys whenever you're doing this yourselves in the garage you know the drill thanks for stopping by the garage remember abt always be tuning